Hello again. We're still looking at trigonometric functions, but we've added a new thing, a range. Before we looked at some problems where it was just solving for x and without conditions. Normally you're going to have conditions. You're looking for x between certain values, a certain range of x. In this case, I've got x is limited between 0 and 360. We've got the greater than or equal to symbol here. x is greater than or equal to 0 and it's less than or equal to 360. So in other words, x is between 0 and 360. That one range we're looking at. Remember, otherwise we get limitless answers because the, the sinusoidal functions, these trigonometric functions, go on forever. Sine just keeps repeating every set period. Great. So we're looking between 0 and 360 to limit the number of answers we get. And what do we got? Sine of x is equal to 0 0.5. Great. Okay. Well, we start the same way as before. Sine to the minus 1, we want to get x on its own, so we do the opposite of sine to cancel it. And of course, do it to both sides. And what we're left with is x on the left-hand side, and we punch it in our calculator, remember. Sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.5. Again, there should be a button like this. Sine, don't do sine to the minus 1, go find the button. It's probably, again, your sine button, you click shift or second function first. Sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.5, that should give you 30 degrees. Make sure, by the way, you're working in the right units. In this case, we're given between 0 and 360 degrees. We want an answer in degrees. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Very common mistake. Uh, if we had 0 to 2 pi, we would be working in radians. So then you switch your calculator to radian mode. Either way, it doesn't matter. Remember, we've already looked at how to convert between them anyway. So we could get in degrees and then get our answer in radians just by converting or vice versa. In this case, we're choosing degrees. So we've got x equals 30 degrees, and we might be tempted to call it a day. We've got an answer. We plug it in, we'd see this is true. Sine of 30 equals 0 0.5, great. But remember, this function repeats itself. In fact, if I draw out the sinusoidal function, it would look, now I'm not actually putting any kind of scales, and I might not draw it as properly as I should, but it should look something like this. That was pretty poor drawing. These should be the same size, these two hills, the top and the bottom, but it repeats itself. So why is that important? Well, if this is 0 to 360, you can see it's, if it's 0 0.5 here, there's going to be another answer. So often we'll find there's two answers. In the previous case, when you're solving for, say, 1, well, there's only going to be one answer in the first range. But in this case, we should expect to see two answers. Now, how do we even get that second angle? We've got some x1 so far. Solved an x1, our first possible solution, our first angle. Well, it helps if we consider the unit triangle, or the unit, <laughs> unit circle, sorry, unit circle. So what do we got? If we start at 0, then we go up to 90 degrees, then 180 degrees, and 270. So I'm going to be showing you a couple tricks to solve these problems. This is the first one. And we can think, by the way, that coming back around, this would also be 360 again. If we get all the way around, a full circle is 360. But what we want to do is figure out where the different things are going to be positive. And you bear with me, you'll see why this is important in a second. What we do is write out cast. Starting with that quadrant down here, we write out cast. And this is useful. It's a way to remember where things are positive. C cosine is positive between 270 and 360 degrees. A is for all. So sine, cos, and tan are all positive between 0 and 90. In fact, double check. Make sure I'm right about this. Punch in two, cos of 280. You should get a negative number. You punch cos of 70. You should get a positive. Sine of 70, positive. Tan of 70, a positive. In the region 90 to 180, sine is also positive. And in the region 180 to 270, tan is positive. And so this is where cos is positive, here and here, and it'll be negative everywhere else. Sine will be positive here and here, negative everywhere else. Tan is positive here and here, negative everywhere else. Why is that important? It's another thing we have to remember. Well, why is it important? Look at our equation. We start with sine of x equals 0 0.5, a positive number. So we know we want sine to be positive. Great. Where is sine positive? We just said here and here. Our first answer, x, 30 degrees. 
Well, that falls in this region. We also have to find an answer in this region that's positive. Hmm. How do we do that? Well, there's another set of kind of rules or tricks you can use. Whenever you're going, you have some initial x1, some initial angle. To solve the other angle, there's three cases we consider. Three possible cases. What we might have is, say, an x2 is equal to x1 plus 180, or x2 equals 180 minus x1, or we might have x2 equals 360 minus x1. These three cases, we apply them, one of these will get us our other answer. Great, but how do you know which one of these to consider? I mean, again, we can remember these are three possible cases, but this goes back to cast again. We want to get an answer in this region. We just saw the first answer we got was in this region. We want the second one to be in this region because we don't need sine to be positive. Just looking at the initial value. Sine was positive. We need sine to be positive. Our answer must be between 90 and 180, our second one, if there is a second one that exists. So we look at these three cases, which one would work out? 30 plus 180. Well, that would put me into this region. Sign's not positive there. 360 minus 30, 330. Puts me here. Sign's not positive. 30 or 180 minus 30. Oh, that's 150. That puts me in the right area. And now I'm done, basically. What I do is go check my calculator. I would see, well, 150. Sign of 150. What is that? Sure enough, we'd get 0 0.5. So we would see another solution is x equals 150. It's a little tricky. I know it seems pretty involved. There is quite a few steps. But this is the basic method we're going to use any time we have sine or cos or tan equals to something. We get our first answer just from the calculator. Remember, we literally had our calculator solve this for us. Or if you knew it, you could solve it in your head potentially. but. Punch it in your calculator, get the first answer, and then use this kind of analysis to figure out the other. If I was trying to get into this quadrant, I would use the plus 180. If I was trying to get into this quadrant, I'd use 360 minus my first answer. And we will look at some other cases later.